gonna be just fine. Welcome to Monster Tutorials. I'm Dr. Rodcod, MT. Today we are making brains. Brains like that, brains like that, and they're squishy. Let's get started. For this uh, tutorial, I want the brain to be like almost full size. Uh, but also realizing that some of the skeletons and props that you buy are not going to be full size They're a little bit smaller. So I want to fit all of them. So I'm going to be using this guy Hello That guy is going to be my my guide because his head is well not the head the top of his head so the lid of his head this thing Comes off right so this will make a good uh, template for the size of the brain, but keep in mind that there's a full size skull. So I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm going to trace these lines on a piece of paper so I can use that as the main template. The other reason I'm making it smaller is so that it can fit in something like this, right? So if you were to do this into a prop where you can pull the hair off and you can access the brain like you're doing surgery or something, uh, it will be smaller. This is way too big. This fits like a hat on her. So keep that in mind. Let's move this guy somewhere. And I'm using a little piece of cardboard. And with a pencil, I'm going to draw that initial size, right? So you want that brain this size if it's to fit in this guy, but we want it smaller. So I'm going to go another quarter inch in. So that's the size that I want, this inside circle. Now for this guy, I'm using this guy as my uh, reference, right? Uh, let's take this off. Let's pull the brain out. Do a little quick anatomy lesson. I'm going to do the pink area only, right? So I am not going to do the cerebellum or the brainstem. We're just going to do the frontal lobe parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe, the pink stuff. I'm going to sculpt this out of clay because I've decided to make this like you make a latex mask. For the core, I want about that much clay right here, right? So for the core, I want something about the size of a mango or an avocado. So let's start with some newspaper. one more that looks good I'm gonna hold this with tape because otherwise it's going to just keep on furling so I'm just going to put tape around it around it around it all around until it gets this shape so keep the front a little bit narrower the back a little bit wider and the bottom nice and flat so this is masking tape and just slowly we start giving it the shape that we want so we want this to be rounded right flat and around. That 
think that looks good. Now, turn it around, flatten it a little here. There's the shape. There's the shape. Pretty good. We're going to build the clay on top of this. So the clay we're using is a regular moist pottery clay from Hobby Lobby. It is like 20 bucks for a box. And uh, it's similar to like sculpting clay for masks, like a wet clay, but it doesn't have the glycerin in it. So this one will dry up a little bit faster. You can slice some pieces off, but I had some slices already made from uh, one of the projects that we did in the past. That thickness looks pretty good for, for the template, right? And we can always add to it or take away from it. So what I'm going to do is just encapsulate this form with clay. Put that there. Get it around like that. Like that. Perfect. And around. Then we can add another piece right here. This is where we cut with this thing. Cut a piece off so that these two match up. And this one, fill it up there. Put this flat piece right on top. That's looking pretty good. Okay, I'll keep smoothing until this is perfectly smooth so we can start carving all the folds and bends and shape of the brain. Okay, like I said before, I gotta go have dinner, so take a spray bottle with water, just mist it. The idea is to keep the humidity in. Take a Kroger bag, place it over. There you go. You can put something on top to hold the weight down, but this should be okay, okay? As long as you come back to sculpt within a few hours or the next day. If you're gonna leave it longer, then seal it, put some weight all around it so that it's sealed and nice and moist. I'll see you in a bit. That's looking good. I'm gonna keep smoothing it out with this guy right here. And this is from a dollar store uh, dental kit, which comes with like a tongue scraper. This is also perfect for smaller scale scraping, right? So I'm gonna smooth it out all the way then I'm going to take this guy right here. I'm going to draw, basically, I'm going to draw all these little cuts on this brain. Okay, these little folds and everywhere it turns and uh, try to like mimic it as much as possible. Right, so on the side and the top. That's looking pretty good. So now, going to the best that I can eye out the middle so we can divide the brain into its left and right hemisphere or sides that looks good now this is the hard part so start at the front so at the front there is a circle with a slice I'm going to repeat this pattern on this side. For carving this, I'm using this tool right here. It has an angle. And uh, I'm just going to start cutting the grooves of the brain. I 
I'm going to continue doing this on all the marks that we put. I have carved all the spots as best as I could from this pattern. Okay, now the challenge is to repl replicate this on this side. So let's get started with that. So I've sculpted this side already, this side, not so much, but I wanted to show you what's the technique for doing all this. So the first thing uh, I do is cut the main channel with this tool, right? So like that, and that's what the tool looks like. It's just a little angle thing. It's kind of sharp, right? The next thing I do is, uh, since the walls of it are pretty steep, I take, where did it go? I've been taking this guy right here and just uh, scraping that edge about 45 degrees, right, to round it up. I'll keep rounding it up all the way until it's nice and round, okay? As you can see, it's now rounded here and it's rounded here. So we'll uh, keep rounding this until we like it. And this is time con uh, time intensive, but it's but it's fun if if you don't mind having some time to meditate as you do this. But there you go. So that how I did this little lobe here is how I did all this side. So I'm going to repeat this right here all i'm doing is repeating what i just showed you there okay so i'll see you when i get a little bit closer to being done and then we'll start smoothing out everything i finished carving this and i started smoothing out the folds right so now it's the polishing time so i'm taking, taking a little bit of water and uh, paintbrush, right? And I'm going to start smoothing any uh, rough edges to make sure that everything is nice and smooth like a brain should be. Now this smoothing method is what people told me to do on Instagram when I asked, how do I make this nice and smooth? So let's try that out. I'm using just a tiny little bit of water just to kind of like polish it. The edges. I don't want to dissolve all the clay. You can also use your fingers for some of the rougher areas. This guy is done, so I'm just Kind of like polishing the last little bit with my hand but we're pretty much ready to mold i'm sure we could spend more hours getting this detail but let's go and make the mold i got this tray from ikea and i'm going to do the mold right there uh, this brain is loose so i'm going to get some uh, hot glue just on the core. This is just to hold it in place. And I move just in case. There. I also have a tub. And I'm gonna mix the plaster here. So we're gonna use, it is not a mask. I'm not care about the precision and shrinkage. So I'm using the cheap, you know, all purpose plaster. It's called Perfect Plaster. I got this at Hobby Lobby, I think or Michael's, one of them, I don't remember. So I'm gonna follow the directions, but basically I'm gonna put some water here, about that much. I'm going to start putting the plaster slowly until it's saturated, which means that the plaster starts not taking any more water. So it starts looking like a dry riverbed. I'm making sure to sprinkle this all over the place and not just in one big 
you know, lump dump there. Just make sure that the plaster gets even coverage from the water. That is saturated. I'm gonna let it sit for 10 minutes so it uh, the water permeates all the way into the plaster. And I'm going to take some petroleum jelly and just brush it all around the area where the mold is going to go. I'm not putting any on the brain. I borrowed this spoon from the kitchen and we're going to start mixing this real well. Make sure all the lumps and clumps are out. All right, so first step to capture all the detail that we worked so hard on this is I'm going to just drop some of this really liquid plaster on the brain, making sure it grabs every little crease and fold. Uh, this stops air bubbles and it also makes sure that you catch all the detail. Now here be gentle. Uh, I'm not scraping the brush across the clay so it doesn't uh, put a line or a mark on it. I'm just gently tapping the plaster into the brain. Now I'm just going to start layering some more just gently. Just gently build it up. As the plaster thickens, it'll build up faster. Looks great. And I'll switch to the spoon. Start layering it on top. Now that has built up quite a bit. So to give it some strength, I'm taking some of these strips of burlap dipping them in the plaster, getting them nice and saturated, like that, and just carefully laying down, laying them over the sculpture. That will make your mold nice and strong so you can get many castings out of it. There you go. Now let's keep building this up. This is starting to kick in, so I'm taking this and just sliding it up just to give it that round shape. I'm cleaning the edges and putting a little bit on top here and making it nice and flat. That will make the mold nice and level. That looks great. I'll just smooth it out a little bit so it doesn't have any sharp edges. This plaster is kicking in all the way now. That looks great. Now I'm going to let this sit here. It should kick in it says in about you know be nice and hard in about an hour, hour and a half, but I'm gonna leave it overnight. So I'm gonna to go to bed, get cleaned up, and uh, then we'll demold this. See you then. Well, this hardens a couple words of caution. First is uh, I washed my hands, but I did not wash it on the sink. This stuff will ruin your plumbing, right? So what you do is just get a bucket, put some water in it, then wash everything in the bucket, and then dump the bucket in your garden, front yard, backyard, it doesn't matter. It's just calcium carbonate with a few other minerals, uh, which the plants can use anyway, okay? But don't flush it down your drain because that will be a very expensive prop you'll be making. The other thing is this is a exothermic reaction. So uh, keep the plaster away from your hands. Here's my thermometer. So let's shoot it at the table. Right, 73.5, but check this out. It's already at 99. So it's going to heat up quite a bit. 
just leave it then I'll cool down I'm gonna leave it overnight and then I uh, will demold tomorrow and I'll go on to the next step so I'll see you in a flash in a flash and we're back so check this out that's a solid now one of the cool things about a uh, plastic you know non-porous surface is that the uh, plaster peels right off right so even with the parts without Vaseline the plaster falls off but what we're doing right now is removing this mold uh, look how easy that was the only thing stuck is the hot glue There's our mold. Let's start cleaning it up. There's the core. Now we just gotta get all that clay out of there. Oh, for removing the clay uh, so that we don't scrape the detail off, right? Uh, we're going to use something plastic like this. But even then, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna hit the plaster but instead I'm just going to grab the clay and then start pulling it slowly that's what we want see the separation right here start peeling that and the clay starts separating from the mold The next step with this, I'm going to take it to the sink and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a toothbrush very gently with water and remove the excess clay so that this is nice and clean so there's no residue uh, on the plaster. That way the plaster gets like really clean and really absorbent for when we put the latex in there. Also I'm going to measure the volume of the brain to see how much latex we need and to see how much expanding foam we need. This guy's nice and clean, still wet, but it's clean. And it measures about half a liter. So 500 millimeters, which is almost like one pint or 16 ounces. So keep that in mind because we have to calculate how much foam we have to put in there. I'm gonna put this here on the side. As for this, I'm going to set it upside down and let it dry all the way. What I might do is I might put it on top of a fan to speed it up. But this has to be dry as a bone. It doesn't have to, but it helps a lot because if it's dry, it will absorb the moisture out of the latex, leaving just the rubber there a little bit faster than if it's saturated and wet, where the latex just sits there and barely gets absorbed. This is nice and dry, so let's put the latex in. For the, you can use any kind of liquid latex. I'm using this cheap kind. Uh, I also have some mask latex there, but for now we're going to try this. Uh, the only difference between this and the mask latex is that this has more ammonia and more fluid. So this one's really liquid and thin, whereas the mask latex is thicker, a little bit creamier. So that's 16 ounces, that measures 16 ounces. So I'm just going to pour the whole thing in there, and then we're going to let it dwell or sit for... Uh, I think I'm going to give it about one hour, and then I'll check how thick the thing is, and I might give it an hour and a half. It depends how thick you want the skin on the brain. We're going to... Take the excess and pour it back in. Now I'm really shaking this in there so that it covers the, the whole surface area of the mold. That way we can avoid bubbles. And there's a link to this latex uh, in the description below where you can get it for like cheap. Looks like we need a little bit more. Just making sure the latex touches all the edges. This has been dwelling for one hour, so let's pour it out. So that is coated with latex, so we're going to let this cure all the way. So right now it's kind of liquid, so I'm going to set it upside down to drain and then to cure. 
when it cures it'll look a little bit yellow so I'll see you in a bit this latex is cured all the way so I'm not gonna pull it yet instead I'm going to put the foam in here now for the foam we're using this two-part variable density foam right it's called a uh, TC 200 or 266 uh, from Brick in the Yard Mold Supply okay and the way this is mixed is uh, for a soft squishy foam is uh, three parts by weight of this for ten parts of this okay now here's where you get into the math part of it so I hope you can follow this but if you can't I put it in the description below so the mold fortunately is 16 ounces this expands 16 times that is awesome which means we only need one ounce of pre-expanded mix in here now the technical specifications for the foam are right here on this sheet and uh, if you want a softer foam like really squishy we're doing three parts a ten parts b but if you want it a little bit solid or harder foam then you can do uh, five parts a and ten parts b right so we're doing three and ten so that's 13 parts so we gotta divide the one ounce by 13. now i have my studio is well ventilated i have the windows open plus a fan going out there that draws the air out but still you're gonna wear gloves because these things have warnings everywhere same with this one and i'm also wearing a dust mask If I didn't have the ventilation open, I would wear the respirator, this guy, but we're good right now. Besides, we're going to mix it, pour it, and then I'm going to leave, uh, go to dinner. All right, I have two scales here, which I have calibrated, and they both work. Yep, so I'm going to use this. 6.3 grams, part A. any one of this one now like I said it's going to take about 10 seconds to stir and then we have to pour it in and just let it rise all right here we go mix this up real good 10 seconds so That looks good just spreading it a little bit around and let it sit it's been an hour so what I did is I placed this folder I don't know what kind of uh, material wouldn't stick to the foam so I just put a folder with a little weight this little piece of 2 by 4 so it's nice and stuck there but it's been a while so it should be done so what I'm going to do is take a bread knife and just slice through the foam there it is so let's pull this is the moment of truth right now so let's start pulling this out of here this latex is nice and thick but let me zoom in and the way we're doing this is uh, we're going to peel this little liquid latex off that is cured. We're going to very gently start pulling it away from the mold. See that? Watch how it pulls out. But very gently. So now over here. And this is why I don't recommend using this kind of foam. Because this foam is rigid which means it will be really hard and it would not compress when you're trying to demold it which means it will be stuck in there forever you would have to either break the mold or scrape the foam up so you need to use something spongy like this look how nice and soft that is all right this keeps working keep working this all around Check it out. 
So there's the there's our brain, nice and squishy. Let's trim this off. See what it looks like. So let's finish this. So for this, it's super easy. It's gonna end up nice and shiny, right? So you have uh, many options because you can make brains almost any color and they will look cool. For this particular one, I want like a pink color, right? So it looks like there's like blood uh, in between the folds uh, and just kind of like a pinkish hue on top. So we're going to take, now we're going to do this with a brush, right? With a sponge brush, we could do it uh, with a, with a airbrush, which we'll do next time. Once we do a few props with brains, I'll use that airbrush. But for now, let's do it by hand. So let's take a little bit of liquid latex, about half of that. And let's put about three or four drops of food coloring. I need to buy some more. Nice, see it takes kind of like an orangish color and that's because the liquid latex is kind of yellow in nature. All right. And quite simply, dip it, and then we're going to be dabbing this just to get in between the folds, but then we can brush over the top. And like I said, this won't be pink all the way, it'll dry translucent. I'm going to do this all over, but while I do that, I wanted to thank all my patrons from Patreon. I really appreciate the support. That's uh, how I can buy the latex and the foam and the paint and everything. So thank you so much for the support. And if you're interested in supporting Monster Tutorials, just uh, check out the link on the description of this video. All right, now it looks really pink. It doesn't even look good, but like I said, this will dry kind of clear and I'll show you. Just get yourself a hair dryer. And watch this. I might speed this up, but check it out. Check that out. Nice and shiny, looks wet. This one is more of a fresher uh, brain right here. But let me show you another option that you can do. All right, enter the cooked or old brain. So this right here is the same as this, right? But this one, I used a little bit of uh, red, a little bit of blue, okay? A little bit of yellow, like two or three drops each. You put it and it gives you this nasty rotten brown, okay? And the other trick right here is See all this tripe or nasty guts, whatever. This is just a latex that had spilled all over this table. And I put some powder on it, baby powder, then peeled it off and just mixed it with a little bit of fake blood. That makes the coolest color. Look at that. It is a little pieces of red, little pieces of, of black right there. And the color of the latex, which is that yellow sinewy look. So when you see on the video me pulling this brain and kind of like dripping blood, this is what that is. Which one do you like better? And on this one, if you put some uh, fake blood on it and it pulls in between the folds, kind of like this right here. See how it's pulled in between the folds? It'll look really, really like fresh, right? So uh, you just saw me quickly paint this, but uh, I'm going to add blood to it. But that is how you make a brain. And the best part is I still have the mold, which means I can make a ton more brains, right? I can make pink brains, green brains, gray brains, any color we can. I mean, let me know in the comments below, what will you do with the brain? I was thinking of a prop with maybe some electric wires coming out, kind of like a Dr. Frankenstein office. Uh, this can go inside of one of my skeletons in the head. It could be in a zombie scene, right? 
uh, if you're shooting a small video or something like eating it then tastes that good trust me I tried uh, so let me know below uh, what you will be doing with your brains and as always thank you for watching I love you guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed that you like this kind of stuff then subscribe because I have more coming all right I'll see you next time I'm Eduardo Talbert or Dr. what was it Rod Cod MT all right see you next time prop mob